Hello and welcome to Musotech. This is the show for you to uh, help you with all your technical advice as a musician. And this week we're going to do, uh, going to be talking about the very basics of PA systems. So um, the most basic PA system you could have um, and how to set it up and, and get a sound out of it. Uh, in future episodes we'll move in, into more detail of um, how to do a mix, how to set up more complicated PA systems, um, et cetera, et cetera. So first, a few basics that uh, we need to uh, have a PA system that actually works. We need a source, uh, something like microphone. We need sound coming into the microphone. So person singing or guitar playing, etc. And what happens inside the microphone, there's a little diaphragm, little plastic diaphragm. In these sort of microphones, it vibrates, makes a uh, very weak electrical signal when it vibrates, and that passes down through the microphone through a cable, and then it needs to go into a little preamplifier, which can be something uh, like this mixer, and the mixer not only amplifies that signal slightly, but uh, then uh, mixes in with other microphones. But in the most basic sort of um, system, you have um, your signal in, a preamp, in other words, something like the mixer, but just really basic. And then you need something uh, to amplify that again, to make it loud enough, and that is usually a power amplifier. Sometimes they're built into the mixer. Um, sometimes they're a separate unit and sometimes they're built into the speaker. Now, in this uh, Yamaha speaker we have here, uh, the amplifier is actually built into the back. So if I spin him round and tilt him up, let's have a, a bit of a look. So this is a, um, a uh, speaker box. It's got its own built-in amplifier and it's got an input on the top that can be uh, for a microphone or you've got also a line input that it could be for a guitar. So um, this can be used as a PA, um, and it also can be used in uh, a larger PA system with multiple of these for front of house and for fallback. But for the most simple PA, uh, this is it. And um, mainly for solo artists or just um, someone playing guitar or singing, there's no, uh, it's a little bit hard to put both instruments in at once on this so um, now what you have to do and uh, you can see by the overhead shot that uh, there's not much to these you have like I said an input volume control your power IEC input and a couple of switches now these switches are very important especially one here um, not sure what you can see but it says mic and line now if you're going to use it for a PA on its own, with, a, with its own microphone into it, you really need to make sure that it goes on the microphone and vice versa, if you're gonna use it later on with a mixer or something like this, uh, you make sure it goes back onto line. So if you, we'll just uh, make sure it's on microphone here. So I just need a pen or something to poke in there and push that in. Now, that's in, which is uh, for mic. And then we'll lay this back down again. Now, obviously we're going to uh, plug a microphone. This is a, uh, a vocal microphone here, dynamic microphone. Uh, we'll go into more details in the next few shows about a bit more about microphones. Um, or I said, as I said, you could plug a, uh, a guitar straight in to that uh, guitar type jack there. But uh, in that case, you'd most likely leave it on the line setting, depending on your uh, guitar pickups. Now, uh, so what we do is plug some power in first, as I said. Get our power lead here, plug it in, and flick the power switch to on. Now, as, as I said, we've, uh, I'll turn it around so we can see this side. As I said, I've uh, switched the uh, to mic input. Now, the next thing I'll do is turn the volume right down. 
uh, always a good idea before you plug a microphone in to make sure the volume's down on any sort of mixer. So what this actually has, it's like a mini mixer up in the top and then down here it has its own amplifier built in. So um, it, to be a powered speaker, um, that's what it requires, its own amplifier built in. Now the top input um, says input and that jack says input and the bottom one is a through, so it's an output. So this is a three pin XLR, which I'll show you a little bit more detail if I go to the overhead shot. Now we'll just, if we can get that in shot there. Okay, so the three pin connector like that is the same as what's in the back of the, the speaker. Um, and that's common on every uh, microphone of, of decent quality anyway. It's got uh, that sort of connector on the back of the microphone. So the cable that we use for it, something like this, and it has male one end. You might not be able to see the connectors. So well, there we are. Male one end, uh, female one end, and male the other end. So um, now we plug, plug our microphone in. And then we plug the other end in to the speaker. Um, see what this shot looks like. Yeah, it might be a bit better on this shot. Um, into the input here, which is just there. Now, the next thing uh, we need to do is uh, the power's already on. We had the power on. We had the volume turned down. So we'll gradually increase the, uh, the volume. I'll come back to that shot. Gradually increase the volume, and slowly you should hear it's starting to work as a PA. Now that's um, quite a nice sound. Um, in a good quality microphone, uh, good quality powered mixer like this with a decent microphone, um, you won't need a lot of um, EQing. So luckily they don't come with much EQing. This particular Yamaha one comes with some limiters. So what that means is it can't drive it too hard and damage the system. Um, it also comes in with a high pass filter which, as you can hear there, gets rid of all the lows. So if you want it clearer for um, announcing sort of work, that's, that's what you'd use. But for vocals, for music, I think I'd probably leave it out. So you've got that warmth of sound. And you've also got a, um, a, a preset there, a type of um, EQ um, that's got a bit of a boost in different areas on it. But for this particular thing, I think I'd just leave it as it is. So that's quite a good PA. Um, just for standard vocals, um, no effects, no reverb or anything like that. You could always put a reverb pedal in front of it, but you can hear the quality of that. Now, just one, one important thing is to make sure with any sort of PA system, doesn't matter whether it's this size or a huge PA, one of the biggest hassles you have, um, other than getting clear, nice sound, is feedback. Um, and feedback for those who don't know, is that squealy, horrible noise you get when the microphone starts to amplify the sound from the speakers again. And it just keeps amplifying and amplifying it. So the problem you have there is if either if you turn up too loud, it'll gradually start picking up the sound from the speakers and causing that feedback. Or um, if you have the speakers in the wrong position so that they're facing back into the mic, the mic can hear the speakers directly. So. I'll just demonstrate that a little bit without trying to blow your ears out, or mine. And if we come around this side of the mic, you can start to hear it getting a little bit squealy there, that squealy noise. That's because the mic's picking up the front of the speaker. So always make sure your speakers are in front of you or facing away from you, other than um, foldback monitors, which have to face you, but they're facing the back of the microphone. So the mic, is, these sort of mics pick up from this direction. So make sure your sound from your speakers is out that way and not, not the mic facing into the speakers. And uh, you should have, that, if you always remember that, to have your speakers, if you have a couple of speakers on stands for a vocal PA, make sure they're out in front of, the, um, of where you are and you'll get a lot more volume out of it, a lot more gain and volume before you get that squealy noise. So that's uh, all for the real basic setup, but like I said, this is okay for just a soloist, uh, one vocal, or a guitar, just plug straight into it. Um, but now what we'll do is we'll move on to um, a bit more complicated setup, but uh, not much more. Um, 
but this is the, the system that you'd start using when you had more than one input required. This uh, unit here is a, um, a mixer, like I said, so it actually mixes more than one, one uh, source. And as you can see here, it's rows of uh, knobs. And um, they're usually in a mixer, they're called channels, input channels or channels. And each channel has basically the same knobs on it. So if you just forget about most of them and come back to just uh, the one channel, if you're putting one mic in for the start, there's the best way to take it. Now, um, what we're going to do is use the, uh, the powered speaker still, um, but we'll have to switch it back, as I said, switch it back to um, line input. Uh, so if you remember that, if it's got a mic plug straight into it, it's on mic. Um, and if it's um, coming out of the mixer, it's actually what's known as a line level coming out and going in. So first thing we'll do is um, turn down the volume again and get our little pen here to get at the switch. Now there's lots of different brands of powered speaker but most of them have um, the basic ability to use as a, um, a microphone straight in or to use them um, as a PA plugged into a mixer. So we'll leave, actually leave that in there because what we're going to do, that input now will come, now a line level, it'll be used as a line level out of the desk, out of the mixing desk. So uh, switch to the overhead shot and you can see here exactly how the desk's made up. Um, as I said before, it's got different ch channels uh, sitting there and what we're just going to concentrate on for this demonstration is just one channel so you can see how that goes. So we'll just use channel one, which is uh, the left one. Now over the right side of the board here, you'll see, if I just angle it around a little bit, you'll see um, a fader over the right here. If you can pick that, it says main. And um, so that's your main output level. So what happens is your sound comes in through your input channel you have a fader or a volume control down the bottom here and as you turn it up it feeds it across to this master or main out and then out through these connectors on the top here. So what we need to do then is plug, uh, plug our cable from the speaker into one of the outputs on the top. Doesn't matter which one, but uh, usually if you're only using one, you'd uh, make it the left. So I'll plug it in left. So as I said, we won't go into a lot of detail. This is a f fairly complicated mixer. It's not the most basic. Um, so don't worry too much about all the knobs we're not using and things like that. But th as I said, this is just very basic PA setup so you can get a sound out of the PA. We'll go into more detail in uh, the next couple of episodes. We'll now grab our microphone and we'll grab another lead, another microphone lead like we had before. And we'll plug it in to channel one, which is up on the left hand top side here, as I said. Um, nobody can quite see that, but there it is, uh, patched in up here. Now, we're plugging our microphone into the other end of the cable, obviously. Now, it's not always a microphone either. It could be, um, it can can be like a, a DI box or so similar, something similar to this, um, which is used to feed a acoustic guitar or something or um, some other high output um, source such as a keyboard or whatever back in. So instead of um, Instead of plugging your um, your uh, microphone in, you can actually plug plug the DI in. And if you have a close look on the overhead here, you see it has the the uh, XLR three pin connector, the same as the mic. So you can plug the lead in. And on the other side, it has uh, a jack with input on it, so you can plug in your acoustic guitar or your um, keyboard, etc., or bass or whatever. So we'll forget about the DI for the moment, but you can plug a DI in exactly the same as a mic. So we'll go back to the microphone and plug our mic in. Now, 
The next thing we want to do is actually turn the power on for the desk. So we'll make sure the desk's actually on and the volume's down on the speaker, as we said, so we shouldn't get any noises. Now, to um, I'll keep the volume turned down on the uh, on the speaker. We'll keep the volume turned down at the moment while we test to see if we've got a signal. So to see if we've got a signal, we'll um, if you look at this channel down just above the volume uh, fader down the bottom here, you have a mute button. So just down the bottom here it says mute. So if it's muted, obviously no sound can come through. So we'll unmute that. So we'll take it off. And the little LED beside here now it goes off, which means it's not muted anymore. Now, if you look up the top, just below, I'll shift this back a bit again, just below where the, um, the XLR, the, the input cable goes in, the first knob always, almost always, is uh, an input gain. And what's that is setting the volume to match the um, signal from your microphone. And I know on this desk, you can usually start about 12 o'clock on most desks, but I know on this desk we need to start around um, 2 o'clock, something like that. And that just sets the level into the, uh, into the channel that matches the, uh, the source, in this case a microphone. Uh, we can adjust that later and we'll also talk about gain setups and structures in different uh, following episodes of the show. So now we'll check to see if we've got a signal. Um, I've pushed the uh, master fader up about two thirds, three quarters of the way up. And um, that's, there's a little, um, usually there's a zero or a U, which um, you push it up to, and that's uh, called unity gain, which we'll um, discuss later on too in other episodes. But what we'll do is uh, we've got those pushed up, and over here you'll see some LED little readouts for levels, sound levels. Now if I start talking to the microphone and gradually bring, bring this fader up, we should start to see some signal coming up on that, uh, on that LED. Now you can see it there, it's not really high, so I'll turn the gain up a little bit more up the top here. And now we're getting um, a reasonable signal. Um, Especially if you're singing loud, you're starting to get, you should have your signal coming up to, from half to three quarters of the way up, but not showing any red clipping. Um, and that way we know we've got a signal, it's going through, um, and it should be coming out, this output. So now we'll go back to our, uh, our speaker over here, and we'll talk into the mic and gradually just slowly turn this volume control up. Up, two, 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 one, two, one, two, three, one, two, two, two. And uh, you can hear that there, that uh, we have uh, quite a nice uh, clear sound coming out without doing anything. It's basically the same sound as what we had with the uh, straight into the uh, powered speaker. So um, that's about it. We're not going to go into too much more detail um, uh, about the actual systems. Um, we'll go into that next episode, um, we'll, we'll break it up into different sections, microphones, mixers, speakers, speaker placement, feedback, effects and all that sort of thing. Um, we'd like to thank, um, this week we'd like to thank uh, Power AV, local audio visual company, thanks uh, Grant and the guys down there for your uh, loan of the gear this week. And um, so if you're looking for a system like this, um, for your local band in the uh, in the uh, central Victorian region, um, I can highly recommend Power AV, and there's plenty of other uh, good suppliers around town as well, which we'll be using in the future. Um, so that's about it. That's the very basics of PA. Sorry if I've left anything out or skipped over anything. Um, if you'd like to know more um, or got some suggestions of uh, things I've missed out or can help. Uh, any, anybody watching, um, just contact us via email, which is info at musohub.tv, and we'll be only too happy to uh, take them on board. Um, and also, don't forget, we're going to have lots of episodes about tech, uh, PAs, lighting, um, instruments, how to, um, how to set up your instruments better, and um, setups, anything technical, connectors, soldering, all that sort of thing we're going to have in future episodes. So 
If you'd like to um, find out a bit more about all these subjects, make sure you subscribe. Especially if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. And um, that way you, you'll know when the, uh, each episode's been put up. So um, that's about all for this week. And uh, we'll catch you on the next episode of Muso Tech.